Whenever you adventure ride anywhere vaguely remote, at some point you're gonna come across rivers and one of two things is gonna happen. You're gonna get across those rivers well or you're gonna drown your bike. I've tried both methods and I much prefer getting across rivers safely and not having to undrown my bike in the middle of nowhere. This is a mini tip Monday on how to cross rivers. If you're new here, welcome to Break Magazine. My name's Lel and I'm a journalist, off-road instructor and filmmaker. I do tutorials, bike reviews and travel videos. If you enjoy this video, liking and subscribing is massive for the YouTube algorithm or taking a trip to my Patreon would be amazing. Now let's get back to those hill climbs. Crossing rivers definitely requires a little bit of local knowledge and understanding of what different rivers do. If you're crossing a river somewhere like this, we're in Portugal at the moment, the rivers are really mellow. The worst problem you're gonna have is that there's a hole in the middle of the river that you don't know about and you ride into that hole. If you're crossing rivers somewhere a little bit more dramatic, a little bit more extreme, like Iceland, for example, a little bit of local knowledge about how the rivers are and the way they behave matters a lot. In Iceland, an ankle deep river that's flowing at 20 miles an hour can be a deadly thing. Whereas here in Portugal, the consequences are generally a bit lower. For a start, it's 20 degrees. That helps much more if you get wet. However, regardless of where you are in the world, there's a few really good practices to crossing rivers that are gonna help. There's a little bit of theory to understand about how the water works and what it tells you about what the bottom of the river looks like. You can see here with this river that A, it's quite slow flowing, which is really helpful for crossing it on a bike. And secondly, that we don't have a lot of texture on the surface of the water. The little ripples aren't that big. And the ripples on the surface tell you a lot about the bottom of the river. If you have a river with really big ripples, almost like waves, that means the rocks in the bottom of the river are big and that makes it much harder to ride. Here, the main bit of the river that we're crossing is almost like a mill pond. It has really, really soft ripples in the surface. And even where it shallows out a bit here, you can see that the shape of the river is not that dramatic. So we know that what's in the bottom of the river over there is likely to be pretty easy to ride across. So my second tip with rivers is to figure out how deep they are. You don't always need to wade into every river, but this section of river is surprisingly large to cross and it's surprisingly difficult to see the bottom of. Other vehicles have been through here recently, so the, the water is really murky. In that situation, it's worth taking a wade. Before we talk about the actual riding part of crossing rivers, one thing that can be really helpful, and it depends on the river, obviously, but if there is a bank there and you can get access to it, it can be a really nice safety net for you to have a bank to foot along so you can stand up on the foot peg and foot your way along the bank. It helps a little bit with the the surprise moment of if there's something unseen that you ride over, you've got somewhere to go to that doesn't mean you immediately fall into the river. When we talk about the technique for riding across the river, I think there's three main things to focus on. The first of those is riding at a speed with which you can deal with the consequences when you hit something that you didn't see. It's inevitable when you cross rivers or you cross enough rivers that you're gonna hit a rock in the bottom or there's gonna be a hole. So I like my speed to be low enough that when that happens, I can react quickly enough that it doesn't become a problem. If you go the other way and you have a ton of speed, when you hit that thing, the consequence is quite high. If you imagine riding along a trail blindfolded and just waiting till you hit something, if you go really fast, you're gonna go a long way before you can react and you'll fall off. And if you fall off in the river, then you have a problem. The second part of crossing rivers for me is that I think you want the revs relatively low and nice and constant and a nice constant speed so that everything is really gentle with the ground and you're able to just deal with the balance of the bike without spinning on the rocks, without making things uncomfortable. And then my last part of crossing rivers really well is to make sure that your riding position is immaculate. When we cross, rocky terrain, mistakes in our riding position affect the bike a lot. And so my hands are on top of the handlebars, my elbows are out, and my feet and heels are down so that I'm balanced on the bike and I'm not affecting the riding position. So that's it. That's, the, that's my theory on crossing rivers. There's lots of other detail that you can add to that about dealing with rivers that are much more difficult than this one when the water's flowing fast or the rocks are big or the consequence is high. Again, sometimes it's best to ask a local person about the rivers if you can find one. 
But otherwise, my theory is go slow, be in control, take your time. If you've enjoyed this video, you wanna see more Mini Tip Mondays, you wanna see more videos, or you wanna learn more about this Tenere project bike, you can do so by subscribing to our channel. If you're not into that, but you wanna help us out some other way, we have a web shop and we have a Patreon page where you can support us and help us make these videos and keep making them for the near future. Otherwise, remember, life's better when you're riding.